Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. The wife wanted a breakfast bowl and I've been craving Mexican. We combined a steak, chorizo, and potato dish with some vegetables, homemade pico. If you guys want to see how we do this, here we go. When you combine two of your favorites of all time, this is what you get. Kind of like a Mexican Spanish style breakfast bowl. I got an idea. I hope it works. We'll see what happens. Let me show you the list of a rundown of ingredients. All right. Simple cilantro, tomato, onion, jalapeno, garlic, uh, lime, and that's going to be our pico. We have some eggs go over top. We have some uh, fresh avocado. We have some chuck roast steak, some uh, chuck eye steak. We have the potatoes and chorizo, a little chicken bouillon. We have some taco seasoning, and I like this steak seasoning right here. It's a carne asada. I really like it. I think it'll pair well today. And thank goodness I finally get this out of my freezer. This is a uh, jalapeno and adobo. And um, we should be able to use that. So this is the idea. My wife wanted a breakfast style bowl. You know I'm a big fan of hash browns. It doesn't matter how you do them. Refrigerated, frozen, fresh, doesn't matter. So we're gonna cube our potatoes. But I didn't want the potatoes to be like normal style potatoes. I wanted to infuse a ton of flavor. So let me show you what I've done. I have a pot of basically chicken stock. Take that jalapeno and adobo for that smoky flavor. Try to get as much of that juice that I saved in there as possible. All that's flavor. So that's the canned chipotle and adobo peppers. Yep. Anytime I open a can, I never end up using the whole can. So I take individual Ziploc baggies, do like one or two a bag. So that when I need it for something like this, then it's ready to go. Taco seasoning, I'm just guessing, maybe about two tablespoons. And then just take the potato, we're just gonna make uh, chunks out of them, dices. Skin on, because I like the skin. I gotta tell you, I tasted this stuff right here. Look how rich this broth is. Now this won't work if you add like eight, 10 gallons of water to boil one potato, right? I'm trying to create like a very concentrated broth to really infuse these potatoes as much as possible. I guessed I put about three cups of water in there. I had two large Idaho style baking potatoes. So it's just a guess. Perfect, covers the potatoes up nicely. We're gonna boil these into about 75% done. To our chuck eye steaks, we're gonna let these marinate just for a minute while we get all of our other ingredients prepared. So really quickly, we are going to, a little bit of avocado oil. Take about a quarter of a lime. Hit both sides really good. And then with that taco seasoning or carne asada, right on top. You can use any type of flavor you want. You can really go neutral if you wanted to. I just know that I've used it in the past and I've really, really enjoyed it. It's not just a taco seasoning. It does have some like really good steak notes in there. There you go, let that sit and rest. I'm not even worried about the sides. I don't wanna overdo it, cause there are a lot of flavors going on, just like that. All right, while our steak is going, our potatoes are boiling, let's start on our pico. Tomato. Right now, my potatoes are about I would say 50 to 60% done. The broth is still extremely hot. So what I'm gonna do is just take it off the heat and allow it to cool down. This, while the potatoes are hot, once they start cooling down, will help absorb that liquid. Considering I feel like that's gonna be the catalyst of all the flavor, it's very important. That's a really good step. You don't want to overcook your potatoes now because you don't want mashed potatoes on your griddle. I'm just looking to incorporate as much flavor as possible. Good pinch of salt, a little pepper, and then come back into like quarter to lime. Give that a good mix. All right, now let us mix to set this aside and let all those flavors marry together. All right, you're just looking to see what we got left. Now we're just gonna prep the vegetables to be able to cook on the griddle. Kind of like a fajita style. Garlic's gonna go into the potatoes, thinly slice that. Set that to the side for later.
All right, talking about building those layers of flavor, we're gonna open that chorizo, get all that good fat out of it. Use that as the base for the potatoes. I'm typically not a fan of chorizo like this, but in this instance, I think I'm gonna like it. Typically, I like mine to be a little bit more substance. This stuff a lot of times cook ups to be like, like mush. I'm not a fan of, of that type of chorizo, but I do think it's gonna be a great flavor profile for the potatoes. Talking about temperature control on the griddle, today I've got this at like a medium high, almost a high, because I'm gonna be able to use the high temperatures here. This one's completely off, and then this one's on a medium. It's all about zone control today, so that's what we're doing. Eggs will be cooked over here. Once we cook the potatoes, we'll restore those over there off the cooler side of the griddle while they stay warm. Are you remembering why you don't like that chorizo? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you cook it, it just cooks down to nothing. Like, I'm not a fan of that. There's, there's other ones out there I like better. But with potatoes, I did think it would be good. Throwing down some ghee to put those potatoes down. You can use tallow. You can use oils, high heat oil. Had those potatoes draining over here. You can see how much color the potatoes picked up. Some of those uh, peppers still left in there. Thin layer. While that moisture absorb or gets cooked out of it, don't move around a lot. Kind of let it just do its thing right here. If you notice all that moisture has escaped the potatoes, that's a good sign. Starting to get some char, some crisp underneath. All right, this side's on the medium. Remember, my temperatures could be different than your temperatures. Spread this out a little bit. Still looking to cook and get color. The more that trezo cooks, the more that grease is gonna drip down through potatoes and hopefully give us a great crust on the bottom. Just add us some ghee. What I'm doing now is allowing that temperature to come back up on your griddle. You had a lot of temperature uh, get taken away, zapped away from the potatoes and the chorizo. So now what we're doing, we cleaned up, moved the stuff off to the side, continue to let it cook, building those temperatures back up. I'm gonna start charring some green onions. Just a little, I like them. To be honest with you, I like them. So that's what I'm doing. Steaks go on. There we go. Let me show what I'm talking about with this chorizo and potato idea. See that nice char on the bottom from that chorizo? That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. See, we got some nice color on the onions. That beef fat from these uh, Chuck House steaks were coming down, kissing those onions. I'll take that any day. And then right at the right at the end, I'm gonna add that garlic to the potatoes because I don't want I don't want that garlic to burn. Salt. 
pepper. All right, when your steaks are done to your liking, like anything else, you let them rest. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this down on low. Potatoes are still cooking, vegetables are almost done. The only thing really left to do is the eggs. And can we talk about how fantastic those potatoes are? I mean, we could. <laughs> They're amazing. It worked out. I was worried about the moisture out of this type of chorizo, but as long as they've cooked on the griddle, I'm trying to get like a, what? I just noticed our screen changed. Wrong channel. No, it's wrong. <laughs> keep it up there. If you guys don't know, we have another channel called Pellets and Pits geared towards <laughs> smoking. Shameless plug. Uh, yeah, that char, that's what I'm looking for right there. These potatoes are phenomenal. Do you like them better with a chorizo or do you like them better in that juice? I think it's a combination of it's both. It's a combination. It's the whole recipe idea together. See why I kept this out of the griddle off? Cause it's about learning your zones, about learning how to cook off the heat sometimes. Um, the Traeger does a really good job of, uh, I'm gonna turn this off completely actually. Or that side off, this will be our heat. The Traeger does a really good job of um, having uh, natural zones, but you can still cheat a little bit. Just add a little salt, a little pepper. Add a little steam right in the middle. All right, you ready to plate? Yep. If you're not familiar with a Chukai steak, extremely fatty, extremely flavorful. It's kind of like a poor man's ribeye. These two steaks were like uh, less than 10 bucks. So really good bang for the buck, especially for a breakfast dish, something like that that won't break the budget. See how nicely our potatoes dried out and how they got crispy. The chorizo dried out really nicely. That's perfect. Eggs looking good. Now, you said that you're on a low-carb diet, so I don't need to give you any potatoes, right? <laughs> I mean, that's probably a good portion for me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Even the vegetables got some char on there. I love it when they do that. Kind of steak on the side. Vegetables on one side. A little pico. Right, maybe right there in the middle. We have some fresh cilantro, because I like it in mine, and then maybe just a little bit of avocado. And there we go. When an idea comes out better than expected, I think this is what you get. Uh, when I was in the grocery store looking at ingredients, uh, the more and more I started looking, the more and more my creativity just started going. I'm just like, hey, what about this? What about that? We almost put black beans in it. That's an option, corn. Um, anyways. The chorizo was worrying me. I'm not a fan of that chorizo, but after cooking it like this, I'm a huge fan. It's amazing how you can go from point A to point B. With the potatoes, it came out absolutely phenomenal. The chorizo got crisp up. The potatoes absorbed all that liquid and absorbed that chorizo flavor. You're talking about a foundation of flavor. You're talking about like, basically, we should make a separate recipe just for the potatoes of how good they were. Oh, yeah. That'd be I, awesome for a side dish for like fajitas or something. Oh, absolutely. Or roll them up and then you can like add cheese to them and then like fry them for like a potato flute or something like that. Potato what? Flute. Isn't they called a fluta? Flata? Flata. Flata. I flute. Roll taco. All right. Enough talk because it's cold out here. Got the steak on the side. Got those potatoes. Got the vegetables. Golly.
Matt, I know what you're thinking. Where's my hot sauce? I got it right here. I've had about a bite of everything so far, and it just doesn't need it so far. I mean, everything is just so strong flavored. I agree. It doesn't need any sauce. Mm. My honest opinion is it feels like it's elevated Mexican. The flavors are like extremely deep. You're not missing anything. This is probably one of my best done bowl slash mech. Th this is good. This is an absolute fantastic. You get a little hint of that pico for freshness. Here, let me try. Hopefully. <laughs> Home run. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> the steak is really good. That's a, that's a well-rounded dish. That's phenomenal. All right, if you guys are interested, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. It just helps us be able to hit the back end with some of the ingredients that we need to be able to create dishes like this. And we thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. You can check us out on uh, The Griddle Group on Facebook. We just talk about griddles. We get inspiration from you guys so much, so we can't thank you enough for posting your pictures, posting your recipes, and the going back and forth about what to do here, how about this, all the suggestions that you guys give. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Peace. Mm. Golly, that's good, honey. Yeah, this is up there with one of the best, better ones. Mm.